Hello and welcome again to Talking Shark. So a fantastic performance in Europe put Philippe's men top in the group of death thanks to a five-star performance over a somewhat understrength Montauban side. More reaction to that game later on. But first, let's explain why we're out and about this week in Altringham. Born in County Durham 22 years ago, it's hard to believe that this man has so much experience under his belt at such a young age. Matthew Tate's a fan's favourite here in the North West following his big summer move from the Newcastle Falcons. So let's find out what this fresh-faced hotshot makes of his new job. Matthew, it's been a, a few months now. How are you settling in? I'm oh, enjoying it. Uh, sort of loving the city and enjoying playing at the club. Um, all the boys seem to have been very welcoming and sort of... Made me feel at home down here and uh, doing uh, sort of pretty well in the league and the Heineken Cup at the moment. Walsingham? The What's one. that? I've never heard of it. What's Walsingham. It like? Well, Walsingham so is where I, well, it's where I grew up. My folks still live there um, now. Um, just a little village in, in sort of the middle of the sort of Durham Dales, yeah, middle of Weirdale, the actual place is called. Um, yeah, but I spent... Uh, my youth there growing up. So we all had an image of you turning up being a sort of no man, I don't want any of us. <laughs> North East accent. No, no. You've no. got a trace of one. I haven't got any accent really. I think I went to to posh schools. So I was at um, to private school in sort of North Yorkshire called Barnard Castle, um, which seems to have left me with no accent whatsoever. So I'd, I'd blame that on my, my lack of geordiness. And Barnard Castle... Famous for a couple of other products, England. They played for England, the Underwood brothers, and Mr. Andrew. Yeah, yeah, the sort of the most famous of the exports from the club. Yeah, they were there. Was that talked about when you, you know, when you went to school? Was um, it kind of like when the, you were it, aware that they were there at one in point? In the dining hall at school, they've got sort of pictures up of all ex sort of students who've mm. like sporting honours and academical honours, and obviously. They were, and now they've got pictures up of you. I don't know, actually. <laughs> as I've just said, academical as well. It should be academic. Then uh, were you not a bit of an academic at school? Um, I was all right. I did all right on my GCSEs and A levels and stuff. When you were doing your A levels and probably even GCSEs, you were playing under sixteen and under yeah. eighteen at school. That must have been a weird situation, sort of going away in the summer holidays and playing for your country. Yeah, um, that was that was fair. Bit of a swap in terms of being organised mm. and having all my work in on time. Um, so I was, it wasn't too bad from that point of view. Um, and it was nice just to go away. It was something I was enjoyed doing and a chance to go away to places like South Africa and not have to pay for it and go yeah. and play rugby and play rugby with your, your mates at the time was, was brilliant. And when you finished your A-levels or just as you were coming to the end, you signed for Newcastle. Yeah. Was Rob Andrew there? Did he have a, a connection in signing you at, at that point? Yeah, well, I'd actually, I actually sort of played, um, played a sevens tournament sort of. I think it was after my I think it was just after my levels before school had finished um, in the sixth form um, and got called up and told I was involved in the game against London Irish um, the following week. So of course I absolutely cacked myself <laughs> that I was going to be playing and I pretty much signed that week, played that that weekend and sort of after the when we got into the school summer holidays went straight into to full time training. What about your full debut? Because you're only 18 in your full debut yeah. um, against Wales. It was, a defeat, yeah. but what do you remember about that day? After we, after the game, we had the dinner and sort of saw Mum and we walked back to the, the car and it was actually my, two of my school teachers, um, one of them of which he's the SSI for like the Army Cadets. Mm. So he'd taken all my family that had come down to the... Uh, the sergeant's mess down in, in Cardiff. So mm. when we were walking back to them, had some food and sort of a bit of a chat with them guys afterwards and then went back to mum and dad's car and the uh, the window had been put out. So top 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 a brilliant day overall. <laughs> you enjoyed the World Cup then? Oh, I did, yeah, it was brilliant. It was it was quite a strange thing being away from home for we just all the build up really. We had sort of training camps in Portugal and um going out there and being out in France for for a month um, and being around in squads with people like Jason who and, and Mike Cat as well and yeah. Johnny who'd, who'd been there and won the last one um, it was sort of a great privilege to, to be involved in that just remember being down at Bath when the squad hadn't been announced yet and you were kind of 
speaking to guys that had been axed and yeah. you were like, oh God, I haven't been, I haven't been told anything. Is that a good thing? It was. How do you get told? Do you get a text? Do you? Yeah, usually, well, having been dropped now, I know what happens. It, um, <laughs> you get a text. You do get, you well. do get a text. It's not a text. You get a get a phone call. An automated Co- voice message. <laughs> yeah, you have been. <laughs> you have been dropped. Yeah, and you get a, a phone call and, and go into a room and sort of see the coaches and a bit like Dragons Den, really. <laughs> um, yeah, fortunately during the World the World Cup, but uh, that didn't happen, and it was yeah, it was that was a great great time. It was so. It, to sort of play and, and be involved in what is sort of a huge tournament mm. um, was was a great highlight for me. You had a little um, test tour in New Zealand, which was interesting to <laughs> say the least. But yes. um, out of that tour, and one thing I do remember, I was watching the games with, with my family. Was you coming up on that little buggy? I just remember, I remember seeing the ball coming towards me and then trying to step, and then the next thing I remember is looking up at the it was either the physio or the doctor's head. He was holding my head straight, obviously, to make sure my neck was all right. Mm. Um, but to be honest, by the time I'd got on the buggy, I was all right, so I did feel a bit of a... And you are giving the Vs to a cameraman? I did give the Vs to a cameraman. <laughs> no, <it's>, um, <laughs> they caught that on telly. Yeah, they did, yeah. It's um, like a cameraman, a guy called Dave Rogers, he sort of was always um, around the England stuff, and I s- sort of saw him and gave him a, a casual... <laughs> casual V, which, nice which, in, which in, yes, which in hindsight wasn't the smartest thing to do. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was all right. I was a little sort of a bit embarrassed actually about being mm. carted off on this buggy, yeah. um, and then yeah, went and got my mouth stitched up, and because I'm never a great fan of needles, so I ended up hugging the physio. I think while they were jab- <laughs> jab- jabbing my mouth, um, and then obviously just phoning home to tell Your my mum and girlfriend that I was still alive and. Not to not to stress too much. You think you're a bit of a hot shot? In the middle of this interview, let's have a little look at what we took you to do in the week. Bit of shooting. Take okay, it away. Okay. Bang bang. Paul. My baby shot me down. Hi, welcome to Manchester Clay Shooting Club. Uh, I'm Ian Corrigan, I'm your coach for today. Okay, now I'm going to use this little device. It's designed to check your eye dominance. Close your left eye. On target, yeah. Both eyes open. Close your right one if you would. Okay. So your right eye dominant, coming onto it. Yeah, yeah miss. Yeah. Close your right one. On target. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Left eye dominant. Yeah. Uh, this is the gun we're going to use. This is a slip, right? Here it is. You notice how I opened the gun before I lift it from the slip. And when you mount the gun, your cheek has got to sit on the comb. Lock, stock, and obviously there's your barrel. You always prove the gun is empty, okay? There we go. Okay, can you see where the sky meets the trees? Yep. Well, that's called the visual pickup point. And if you see the target appear, on it, and pull the trigger. So you go one, two, bang. Target's coming now. On it, on it, bang. Okay, high left. On it, on it, bang. That's it, Whoa. good shot. That was almost a ball of dust. Bang, perfect, plumb centre, you've got it. You're not blowing those up with your button here. Steady, steady, bang. That was it. Well shot, very good. Good work. All right, sir. Pressure's on you now. <laughs> Target's coming now. On it, on it. Nice shot. Very good. I'm going to get my arse whooped here. <laughs> yeah. Go for the hat trick, yeah? Hat trick. Target's coming now. On it. Well shot. Bloody hell. Should we get him off? <laughs> what do you think, Matthew? It's embarrassing, get... me. Okay, ready, boys? Oh, yeah, follow Next me. Next stand. You'll get better, mate. <laughs> Coming now. Miss. Move. That was it. Nice Every shot. Go on. I'm glad you hit that one, it stopped halfway across. Okay. We'll give him that. I don't think you're gonna get a rabbit like that. They don't normally stop halfway across. Move. Not bad, just behind it a little bit. Move, bang, that was it, perfect shot. Nice shot, that was plumb centre. He's he's picking them all off in the pit over there, I was taking them on the wall. Oh, still still death. <laughs> all you've got to do is concentrate on the target. When you see this target rise, don't try and shoot it, just stay with it, stay on it, stay on it, and it slows, and as it slows, pull it easy. There's a robin over there, I'll get him. 
Okay, call pull. Pull. Well shot. Pull. Steady. Hey. Steady. Nice. Well shot. Call pull when you're ready. Matt. Nice and loud. Pull. Plum centre. Might bring the missus down for a go. Yep. Get some of it. She'd probably shoot better than you two boys anyway. She says she'd been firing blank. Right, come on. <laughs> okay, now you call pull nice and loud. Yep. Pull. On it. Okay, well shot. That was centred. That was almost a ball of dust. Well shot. Five. Five out of five. Five out of five. Got my work cut out now. Okay, call when you're ready. Pull! Nice. Is he trying to put you off? Pull! Small, small, small target. Yes, just. Oh. Just. <laughs> just. Is it still in the game? Is hanging on? Okay, two more to go. Pull! Target, miss, miss. He's done it, he's missed. Yes. <laughs> well missed. <laughs> if that was a flying elephant, you'd have missed it as well. Pull! Small, small, miss. Bang. Well shot. That'll do. Fantastic. That's you. <laughs> Finish on a high. Okay, well shot, Matt and Will. Thank you very much. I think he got it by a nose. Just. Yeah, just, just pipped you at the pause. Big nose, then, if it was by a nose. Very good. Well shot. I enjoyed that. Take all these guys to do something, and I'm losing every time now. Beginner's luck, I think. Yeah. You've got to get him playing rugby. <laughs> Can I ask you about your nicknames? Because you've got some strange ones. You yeah. need to explain these. Yeah. T-Bone. T-Bone. That was a friend at school called me T-Bone. No one's called me that since he called me. So. Yeah, he's obviously written that on Wikipedia yeah, for us. I don't know what <laughs> that is. Small head, box head, Zeus. Go on, explain some of these. Small, well, small face small was face. Um, Mark Wilkinson, um, the conditioner up at Newcastle. Um, the conditioner's giving you a nickname. Is he allowed to, are they allowed to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Am nice. I allowed to give you a nickname? <laughs> If you want, I'm not bothered. <laughs> Purple cycling shorts. Um, these are, that's not a nickname, but these have they've caught everyone's eye at sale. Um, they Where are. They I had, had them. I got them when I was about fourteen, actually. Really? Um, the same pair. Yeah, and when I wore them, it, wore them then, it, when my legs were like bits of string hanging out the bottom of them. <laughs> so now I've grown into them, um, and I've tried looking for pairs of a different colour elsewhere, but. Um, I haven't found any, so it's it's the purples That's at the a moment. That's a poor excuse, eh? <laughs> well, I quite like them. And uh, you hang out with Sherry quite a lot, don't you? Um, I don't know whether he would be happy with saying quite a lot. I tend to spend <laughs> most of my sort of time with Shezza, um, either in the gym or round and about. Mm. He likes there. building brick walls and smashing them. You like sitting in a ba- in a bath with a duvet, listening <laughs> to the tumble dry. Yeah. Can you yeah. explain that one for us? Okay, oh, okay. Let me read this one out to you. This is something I picked off the internet. Uh-huh. Um, I relax by listening to running water or constant noises. It can be a shower, a tumble dryer, fans. It's bizarre, but I've always liked it. Yeah, I don't. Do you just well, my mum's got the same. Form- I almost like, don't classify it as a problem, but um, <laughs> she she says it's something to do with comforting. It's supposed to sound like uh, the wo- when you're in the womb or something. Well, right. she's been reading up on it, but uh, yeah, yeah, for whatever womology. reason. Whatever reason, well, if I sit next to just for the running water, I find it very relaxing. She said, one of the most relaxing things is a bouncy castle. If you sit on one of those with the sound of the fan. Uh, <laughs> Have you got one in your back garden? I haven't, no, no. I'm working That's on it. That's an idea for a Christmas present. No, if I was to ever win the lottery, I think I'd tra- sort of transform a room into just a... A bouncy castle. Where, where did the duvet in the bath thing come? Have you done that at uh, Edgley Park at all? Has Robbie sorted you out with the duvet? <laughs> no, I haven't actually. No, I have to. I have to pre-warn my roommates whenever I'm away that uh, if they hear the the shower running for a long period of time, I haven't. You just listen I, to it. You're not actually having a shower. I'm not having a shower, and I haven't topped myself in the bath. So reminds me of the womb. Yeah, reminds <laughs> me of my mother's womb. But you like your, you like your food. Yeah, you're saying um, you, you spend more money on food than you you do drink. Yes, I do. Yeah, I do prefer eating nice food than drinking uh, drinking nice drinks, so mm. to speak. And uh, I'll, I'll be making another order of ostrich and kangaroo meats and crocodile on the internet at some point shortly. Tell you what, it's all right. This place. Lots more to come in the second half, including an interview with director of rugby Philippe Saint Andre. First, though, here's something to keep you lot on your toes. Who scored the first ever try in a Heineken Cup final? Was it A, Emil Intermac, B, Steve Ford, or C, Thomas Castagnier? (laughs) 
So before the break, we asked you who scored the first ever try in a Heineken Cup final. And the answer was C, Thomas Castanier for Toulouse against the Cardiff Blues. You know what? I can see what he means about these washing machines. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Matthew Tate's Kitchen. So with the news that Sharks director of rugby, Philippe Saint-André, was to step down at the end of the season, Talking Sharks, as always, was there to see what you thought of PSAs. Au revoir. It came as quite a shock, really. I thought he might have stopped a bit longer, but um, if he wants to go, then, you know, it's up to him. His five years have been brilliant to you. I've loved, I've loved the rugby. I've loved who he's brought in to bring the likes of Chabal, McAllister, people like that, Le Mans, it's been yeah, fantastic. I'm pretty shocked because he's been pretty successful here, a lot of success, I don't really see the reason why he's leaving. Not unexpected, I think it's been happening for a while, there seems to have been a bit of uh, discontent amongst the camp. Wish him well, good luck to him, he got a championship which is great. A little bit strange, uh, funny enough I read in the Times this morning uh, about the big French clubs lining up for him um, and I think that could be exactly why it happened you know the likes of Biarritz you're talking big money uh, I think it's not unexpected he's been great for the club but it, I think everybody needs a change after a while and I think he does too and I, I think it would be great for everybody uh, sorry to see him go but we think we'll have to move on to, to better things What do you think of Kingsley step up now as director of rugby a good move? As a Welshman it's got to be a good move so yeah of course I'm delighted Good move for him good move for the club bit of consistency going forward get some uh, support in with him and I think we'll be uh, up there next year He's got plenty of experience, he's got uh, all the experience he's had with uh, working with Philippe to do the job, he's no problems at all with that, it's just devastating to see Philippe go. You know, he's worked under Philippe for the last few years and he's obviously learned a lot from him and uh, I think he'll do a good job. I'm particularly uh, impressed with his idea of bringing on the, the academy and bringing in new players. I think if you, if you look around the Premiership it's something that Sale haven't done recently and other clubs have and we've, we've suffered a bit because of it. Yeah. Finally, who would be your dream head coach for next season with uh, Kingsley as uh, DOR? Oh, great question. Um, going back to my roots, I think Eddie O'Sullivan's still available, so you never know, he could be an addition. We'd love to see a role for Jason Robinson somewhere. Brian Redpath might be interested in coming back to sale. Brian Redpath, but I, I don't think we're getting away from Gloucester, but he, that would be fantastic. It's too difficult to call. I think Kingsley will do a great job. I don't think he needs someone necessarily right there to, to boost him along. I think he's, uh, he knows enough to, uh, to pull it out the bag for us. I try to be very honest with the guys. I want to speak with the player before uh, everything. And just, you know, uh, it will be five years here, and I think with them, uh, all the good things is better. You live when it's still good, you know. So I don't want to do the year too much. He was, I think, about this for the last three months, and uh, just, to, just, you know, after. Delighted I am in this club and Brian Kennedy bring me from Bourgoin and we have five years fabulous, I think a, a fantastic squad and work with the guys. But I will be here, to, it's not the day to say thank you because I will be here until the last game of the season. So the thank you, the crying and all this stuff <laughs> and the barbecue and the dinner will be in the last game of the season. Just we need to be focused and uh, uh, to win, focus to finish because we have a fantastic squad and we'll have five, six guys back in the beginning of January. And after, you know, I think it's good. Kingsley is a top man. I bring. He was my captain in, Gloss, in Gloucester when I was coach. Uh, I bring him forward coach with me for five years from Doncaster. And I think he deserves to to have a go of a uh, director of rugby. And, uh, you know, I was an ami, he well the club, he you knows well the structure. And... Uh, but, you know, I am just focused on the sports. I feel more light. I don't need to build the, 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 the squad for next year and everything. So I am just focused about trying to win the more games we can until the end of the season. And, uh, you know, it's no problem. And, uh, I, you know, I have I spoke with the board. I have a lot of discussion with Brian Kennedy. And so, you know, we are in fantastic terms. And I think it's, it is it's better to... Uh, to go when I think is a good timing, and after I think after five years, director of rugby, uh, it's a good timing for the club and for me uh, to move forward. Definitely it's a decision of family, yeah. or, or my boys. It's six years. It's or I stay here, and after if you stay here, you need to stay until the rest of your life, uh, and the rest of life until he's, he's 18, right. or to go back to France for the scolarity. So it's. But he's still not decided. Uh, it's a lot of debate. Um. <laughs> <laughs>
So Friday night's Heineken Cup win over Montauban made it three wins on the bounce for the Sharks and things are now looking even rosier going into the Christmas period. Five tries spearheaded by Captain Juan Lobe gave Sharks another European bonus point leading the way in the group of death. We leave you this week with the thoughts of Charlie Hodgson, Montauban's Matthew Clarkin and try scorer Andy Tuolangi. We'll see you next time. It was uh, something that we aimed for today. Um, we knew that Montauban didn't send uh, their strongest team over so it was a matter of us to uh, obviously first and foremost to get the win but Picking up a bonus point was a, was, a, was a good thing for us as well. It was tough. It was, uh, I'm sure it was exactly how it looked. It, it was a tough game. They're a quality side and uh, I mean we tried to match them up as much as we could but uh, I don't think we played our best rugby at times. We were sort of whistled out of the game a lot of, a lot of the time so it was hard to get any continuity but uh, at the end of the day they're a, they're a quality side and uh, it's still a little disappointing. A fantastic performance for the team tonight, but also for you. How was it? Um, that was a good, like uh, that was before like hardly make the teams and stuff. But that was a good opportunity for, for me to make the first team and make a like score a first try for, for myself and also for the club. But it was, I was really proud of myself like for the for the team as well. Yeah, but that was yeah good win tonight. It could have been more. Can I saw you? I've never seen you run that fast in that corner. Chris Bell had some legs on him as well. It could have been six or seven tries. Yeah, I know, and I was nearly there. Obviously, like you say, Chris Bell, Scurry was nearly there as well in the corner. So we made we made some we made some chances. Philippe was um, his usual self. He was disappointed we didn't score them. So, uh, but that's just the way he is, and he's a bit of a perfectionist. And, and obviously, we'll look at the video this week and and look to improve on the, on the performance tonight, and, and, and hopefully do the same again next week. People are suggesting here when they saw the team that maybe you guys are concentrating on your French league. Yeah, it's all experience. Uh, that's what we're looking at. At the same time, trying to be as competitive as we can, because uh, and we are taking this as serious as possible, because um, you know we don't want to. We see the Heineken Cup as a, a big honour for us, and we worked our ass to, off to get here, and uh, up until now we've put in good displays, and, and we we'll go back to the drawing board and keep trying to put them in. You've got lots of bruises because we we were talking about you during the game, and you took down about four or five players each time. It took a, half a team to pull you down. How are you feeling? I feel great, like, like just a little bit sore, but it's not that yeah, it's not that bad. I'm like, ready for like recovery tomorrow and for next week in uh, France if if I get picked again. Yeah, it's a different matter going going away to uh, going away to France and, and picking up points. But and Della Sarri is such a talented player and he's obviously a, the top scorer in the top in the uh, top 14 at the moment. So it won't be easy. It won't be easy at all. But um, obviously, obviously we're focused on on doing the business in, in this group and, and hopefully we can pick up a win next week. Sky Sports want to speak to you now. We get everyone first. <laughs> I'll tell Scratch Sports to do one. <laughs>